Clerk, would you please call the roll? Mr. Duval. Here. Mr. Jackson. Here. Mr. Dowell. Yes. Mr. Duval. Present. Here. 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 Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hope you all are well. We had a long uh, public safety committee meeting, so thank you <coughs> all for allowing um, that to wrap up. We're going to start, um, Mayor Benjamin, with an invocation, if if you choose. I, I hope Reverend McDowell, you still have the energy to, no, to deliver. I was free in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> free, Howard. Why? Well, Howard, well, Father God, thank you for allowing us to join here today to do the work of the people of Columbia. We do believe in the city that justice is indeed the queen of virtues. Mm -hmm. We seek every single day uh, to do right by all the people that make this city great. We ask you to give us wisdom and patience that you inspire a spirit of collegiality and that we were proud of the work we do here today. In his name, amen. 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 Thank you, Mayor. We will start with any questions that you all may have regarding our financial report of November 2017. And you should have a corrected, um, unaudited version of your parking summary um, at your table. And it's Miss Alonzo's birthday, so we do all have to wish oh. her a very happy birthday on today. I've been as, she delivers, as she answers financial Jan, questions. Jan, it's my daughter's question. birthday, too, is who I was really just right? trying to call that I missed during her lunch period. Good question. Two things, Jan. Uh, give us an update on the audit. Uh, are we going to ever see the numbers from last year? Yeah, we're going to do it later. We're going to deal with that. Yeah, we'll talk about it a little bit later today as well, okay. just a preliminary discussion. And then, because I wanted to have a little bit of a discussion with you all prior to me going out. Um, and then on the first meeting in March, or, or the second meeting in March, first meeting, first meeting in March, um, Bud will be here to brief you all. Okay. So we'll talk with you a little bit later today. Okay. The, the second question is, is a general question. Um, it is frustrating to me that here we are in uh, the last meeting in February and we're looking at November uh, financials. I know that you look at the things as they come in in real time so you have a better feel for if we are on track or behind track or ahead of track. Uh, could you give us your professional opinion? Do we need to be worried about coming out in this fiscal year in the green? Well, I wouldn't make any projections for how we're going to end up in June, in February, but it looks, they all look good so far. Um, Jeff and I were having a conversation about the taxes coming in a little ahead of last year, but there are some factors that, that, have, that play into that. So. Is your mic on? I think so. Is your mic on? Okay, so we make sure. Okay. I think so. So far, so good. On, on the revenue side, are you seeing any increases as a result of all of the activities we've seen in the last three or four years? Are they hitting the tax rolls now, student housing being one? That's part of what we're looking to get. It. Uh, Jeff sent a, an email over to the treasurer's office in Richland County to see what they were thinking because they were up year to date from last year, so whether it was assessments or whether it was people were paying quicker because of the, the new tax laws, we're going to see what we're going to see what the treasurer has to say about that. Okay, thank you, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Jan. Any other questions for Jan? All right. Thank okay, you. Okay, our our first city council discussion item will be a presentation, and this will be our initial water and sewer rate study. Presentation, obviously much more to come as we proceed through the budget process. But Mr. Robert Chambers, Financial and Utility Management Consultant for Black and Beach Management Consulting, and his colleague are here to take you through some initial thoughts um, for the water and sewer rate study. 
Sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. I just wanted to introduce myself. I've not met a lot of you folks. I'm Jeff Wells. I work with Black and Beach, and I'm the client director for the city of Columbia. So my job to make sure that the work Robert and others that are working with the city goes the way it needs to go. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, this, we know this is an important part of your financial planning, and, and we uh, are very honored that you choose us to do this work. That's all I wanted to say, and, and Robert will get on with it. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Good afternoon. Uh, again, thank you all very much for allowing us the opportunity and, and privilege. Welcome back, Mr. Chambers. Welcome here. <laughs> thank you. It was always bad when you had to see Robert. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I, I promise no bad news today. Um, for the last few years, we've been, you know, going through the process of looking at rates, and you know, you you all around this table have um, been willing to take action to do what you have to do, you know, to keep and maintain the service you provide, water and sewer service. Today, what we'd like to do as a part of the overview is just take a look at where we're coming from. How did we get here? and then talk about what our plan looks like going forward, and then kind of relate that to how others of similar nature uh, within the industry, other utilities per se, are dealing with some of the same problems you are dealing with. So as a part of the agenda, we look at your drivers, look at the industry, have a slide about integrated financial planning, and then talk about the, the approach we'll undertake. Uh, it's, as is always the case, it's an open forum, so please stop me as you see fit. So drivers. As it relates to financial planning and integrated financial planning, uh, we view financial planning not just as looking at your costs and the revenues you require, but in the bigger perspective of financial planning, you need to understand how it affects your business, how you achieve business excellence, how you be, become and stay resilient as a utility, how it impacts the customers you serve. So in the prism of integrated financial planning, we'll be touching on a few of these aspects as it relates to your greater system. Specific to your drivers as a utility, you're experiencing ex increased demand for the services you provide. You have a diverse and informed customer base, and you, you want to go about sustainably as you are implementing your capital and operating program. And when we say sustainably, we mean making sure you have the right resources and appropriate resources as it relates to people, technology, processes, and all the infrastructure. Not just backbone, but back office infrastructure you require to provide these services. So that's a driver. It's very much the driver, because it, at the end of the day, we don't want to get back to where we were before which is, is working our way backwards, unfortunately, instead of forward. Yes, sir. It, it, <clears throat> it is. And we'll have some slides that talk about as we go on. And then why we're here, maintaining revenue stability and maintaining the financial metrics we've put forth for ourselves to you know, be a financially sustainable operation. And then how this impact the customers we're here to serve. You know, how do we engage our customers and provide the best service at the lowest possible cost? So all of these become competing drivers. So how do we get here? <clears throat> uh, as a city, based on information provided in your CAFR, you're adding about a half a percent of customers per year. And this is for the period FYO 13 through 17. Specific to your connections, you're adding about a percent per year of water, new water connections. Um, but you know, you lost just under two and a half percent per year uh, on the wastewater side. That's because as I understand, you sold a part a portion of your system and that has some implications as it relates to revenues and you'll see how it looks historically. Uh, as now, it when you say that, because we did sell those customers, we get those taps back. Those taps today are worth five times what they were before, so we, we need to calculate those values a little bit. Okay, okay. Okay, we'll... What do you mean we get the taps back? So when we sell a system, so we sold off the customer base, and, you know, 
if we did it for somewhere else, we would get all of those taps the back. The capacity back, so we can sell those taps again. And and the value of those taps went from two hundred to like twenty two hundred dollars. So the value is way much more than it is now, both from a, a short term cash but long term capacity value. Yes. Yeah, so you're assuming that the wastewater system was capacity. I'm not. I, I, it doesn't matter. They still value because of, of the just the mere cost of it is eight times what it was before. Yeah. So so. Councilman is saying is you had a certain amount of capacity that you utilize to serve customers at this point in time. No, these customers are not on the system. You're not using that capacity to serve them. So now when a new customer needs to buy into the system, that capacity is available. And given cost escalation, it should be worth more today than it was at that time, in short. Uh, employees, we looked at your utilities and engineering. Uh, specific to the water and sewer system. And we see that we, it, on average, it's growing at about a percent, over a percent per year. In 14, you know, we lost some employees, and that was because, as I understand, there's a shift out of this department uh, for some customer care, if I'm not mistaken, employees. Uh, but as you can tell, at the beginning of 17, you started to rehire, got that group back in. And you're making you know, the efforts and taking the steps to hire as you need within the organization. You just keep hiring Travis and crew, and we'll be, we'll be just fine. Those guys so, are amazing. So looking at your financials, the ultimate goal here of your financials is to produce enough revenues in its simplest form to meet your requirements uh, and to meet your financial metrics, one of which is line seven debt service coverage. Uh, you see that your revenues is growing from 121.9 in 13 to about 144. And you see here in water support in 14, you had a little dip in revenues as a result of, you know, moving some of those customers. So ultimately, you've taken the steps and taken the action to make sure you have the revenues you require to operate the system and to meet your financial metrics, one of which is debt service coverage. Okay. No, you did take the action. The goal here as it relates to rate increases and revenue increases is to have consistent and steady increases as compared to lumps in how you increase rates. In 13, you, you, you had adjustments that, that average about 8% per bill. In 14, you had an increase in volumetric rates. That was about 8%. In 15, there's a request for 7.9, but it wasn't granted, so there was no increase. In 16, there's a 9.5. In 17, there wasn't an increase. In 18, there's a 4.75. This is positive. This is good. Because as an organization, you have taken action and, and showed the willingness to take action to make sure your revenues are stable and you have the infrastructure and services you need to serve the customers uh, that are connected to the system. The periodic zero increase is make the increase larger, more impact at one time or another. In the future, that's correct. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, <clears throat> final side of how did we get here? At the end of our study last year, we showed the plan, and we approved a 4.75% increase in 18, which is highlighted in blue. And the plan to finance our obligations and capital requirements and other requirements required additional rate increases in the other years. As a part of the exercise on what we'll do this time around, we'll go about reassessing how we have done thus far and you know, looking, taking a good deep look at these increases, and when we'll, we come back, we'll have a better understanding of if it's really still a 13% or if it's lower, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Any questions before we go on? When, when do you think you'll have that for us? So the plan is to come back in April. So let's say six weeks.
Thereabouts. So we'll be able to have it for sir. future impacts. Yes, sir. As we talk about the budget. Yes, sir. So looking at the industry, now we, we understand the road we've taken. What are others in the industry dealing with? Uh, we spoke about infrastructure and that infrastructure is the basis of everything we do, and, and I agree. Every year, Black & Veatch produces a water industry report where we look at about, four, about 400 utilities. We provide them with a survey, and we try to track and understand the key operating trends and paradigms uh, that they're facing within the industry. Uh, for the FYO 17 survey, there's a strong focus on sustainability. There's a strong focus on resilience, how resilient you can be as a utility. And in my opinion, resilient means how well are you able to respond or maintain or sustain your service as a result of an unforeseen event, whether it's operating, financial, however you view being able to stand up and keep going. So one of the, <clears throat> one of the questions we asked, we provided utilities as a part of the survey with a list of challenges, aging infrastructure, managing operating costs, how resilient you are. And we said, based on all of these challenges, how do you rate these challenges as being important, very important, or not so important? And aging infrastructure became, was at the top of the list. Of over 95% of the utilities surveyed said aging infrastructure was very important or important Next after aging infrastructure is managing operating costs, system resilience, managing capital costs. So it comes back to the infrastructure dis discussion, the infrastructure question. Now the next slide will go into a little more detail as it relates to really what that means. This question says, to what extent did, did a few of these items, capital costs, operating costs, increasing system risk, environment and regulatory, how, how did aging infrastructure impact these items? Right at the top of the list is capital costs. Why is that? If a main or pipe breaks, that's going to be an impact on your capital plan. Crews are going to have to go out and fix it, which then becomes an impact on your operating costs. But that provides a certain amount of risk on the system. And for one, that was an unbudgeted emergency. So. Other utilities are dealing with the same issues around infrastructure, around aging assets, and it has an impact, as you said, on your capital plan. It has an impact on how you operate your system. So this just provides a perspective to say, you know, most utilities are experiencing very similar and complex issues. I think we're leading the way in number four. In number four? Okay. <laughs> What's that? Unbudgeted emergency? Yeah, no, we are. Okay. A oh, water main breaks. Water main breaks. We got a rough winter. <laughs> hey, everybody's had water. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so moving on, this question was, you know, what is the level of understanding about rates within your system? This is the level of understanding amongst the customers and stakeholders you serve. Okay. We there are the questions were asked. Do they really understand what you're, you're, you're trying to do and why you have the increased rates? About 34.6% said they understand the need for rates and accept that rates need to go up. About 47% said we understand that there's a need for rate increases, but we don't want rates to go up. So what that says is the majority of the, the 400 utilities that were surveyed said the customer base understands the need for a rate increase. But they're almost split down the middle with regard to should we have one or should we not have one. That's and 400 out of how many? I'm just trying to understand the perspective of it. That's about 400 utilities. Right. Oh, it's the about 195, 194. Something like that. Something there. We're curious. But, but bigger number is a combination of both, which is what's that, eight, about 82, 83 percent. Which is 350 or somewhere thereabouts that says we need, we know there's a, a, a need. Okay, so the next question became how do you communicate with your base? How do you, you know, how do you outreach and, and, and communicate with, with the public, with your stakeholders? 
Uh, 87% of the utilities surveyed said they use the utility website. 70% said they utilize print campaigns. 61% said they did social media. 474 said they did you know, local media outlet. So basically, the, the three mo most utilized sources of communication <coughs> are sources which we currently utilize. Okay. The next question was, what methods did the utility use to address the rate conundrum? The rate conundrum is, we understand that there's a need for a rate increase. We've listened to you and know in our homes we're conserving. But we're conserving, and as we conserve, rates will go up. Why is that the case? So the question says, how do you deal with that as a utility? And it, it's all around education. Continuing to engage with your customer base, uh, being timely with regard to providing the information about the need and, and outreaching to them. Secondly, also trying to utilize tools within your rate and pricing mechanism to reward good positive behavior, efficient usage of water, and you're doing those things correctly. So integrated financial planning. <coughs> integrated financial planning historically was a, a single source objective. It was an exercise whereby you make sure you have sufficient revenues to meet your revenue requirements or to meet your costs. That is no longer the case in today's market, in today's industry. You have competing variables, infrastructure, equities, financial markets, the customer experience, sustainability, and there are questions around these, these components. For example, infrastructure. How do you support innovative capital financing? How do, how do you make sure you get the most bang out of every dollar you, know, you earn and you spend within your system? How do you engage your customer base so that they are satisfied and happy with the service you're providing when they turn on the tap and when they pick up the phone and call customer service? How do you make sure there's a nexus between the cost to provide that service and how you price that service? And, and more importantly, how do you implement sustainable business practices <coughs> to, to achieve operational excellence? As a whole, holistically, all these variables impact the money you collect, the money you spend, and how you operate your utility financially. And it cannot be taken into a vacuum. They all have to be looked at and understood. So the, the, the point here is, Financially, the integrated financial paradigm is not just looking at your costs, but having a feel for how all the other components within your system are affected by, you know, the financing and the cost to operate. The customer class uh, equity. Yes, sir. Tell me a little bit about that. Okay. So what that means is each customer class on your system places a certain demand on your system. Okay. So residential customers. For the class, you have more showers in the morning and in the evening. Industrial has a stable and efficient, for example, usage. And there's a certain demand they place on the system. Okay? As a result of that demand, you have to charge them for that service. You have to charge them for the demand they place. So the equities say, what it costs you as a utility to serve that customer, you should be charging costs. You should be charging the in a similar manner. So if it, it costs you $10, for example, you should be charging them somewhere close to that cost so that everybody has an equal setting on the system based on the demand each customer class places on the system. So that becomes the equity. Everybody has a responsibility. There's equity within the system. And that's a part of what we do in the cost of service components of the study. Everybody is treated the same. That, 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 that's, that's the all, intent. That's the goal. That's the goal and the intent. Everybody in a certain class. Yes, and yeah. it becomes then a balance of everybody may not get to 100%, but the goal is to initiate the process to get there in a balanced form. So going to our, our project approach. So a few items that we are considering as a part of looking at this next study that's coming up. 
uh, looking at revenues. There's a lot of Nye America. We're looking at customer growth, what customer growth will do. You know, again, coming back to the capital program, you have a few, a few big products that are about to come online, potentially. You have the AMI project, you have the Crane Creek storage project, but that one, you all are looking at it, so we'll see what happens therein. You also have potentially a new bulk use customer. A large industry, significant service requirement, and we'll be looking at some kind of a pricing mechanism around the service and how you charge that customer for the service they require. So that will be a part of this study. Okay? We'll also look at impact fees, and impact fees just represent a new customer's buy into the system. I mean, what? Impact fees? Yeah. So every new. Uh, every oh, new you're talking about just the impact to the system. Correct. Yeah, okay. And what they have to pay. Charging somebody. Yeah. And then maintenance of your financial metrics and looking at all of these things and making sure you need all the metrics at the lowest possible cost to the customer. So all of these items will be reviewed as we go forward this go around. So <laughs> this is a, a three-step process where, and I, I know some of you have seen this before, but it's a three-step process where we look at your financials to determine how much revenues you're earning and how much costs. Then we perform a cost of service study to say who should pay based on the demand they place on the system. And the third step says how should we price that service. So that comes up to your rates. What should your rates look like? This is another dimension of this approach. And I'm not going to get into this in detail, but all this says it's a rigorous and methodical approach. Uh, you know, that's you know, dependable and transparent. So another component to this study is the impact fees. What is an impact fee? Our definition is an impact fee is a contribution, or let's say a system buy-in, from a new customer solely for the construction and development of water and wastewater facilities. So it's that new customer's buy into the system based on that new customer's demand requirement. And you get a free toaster, right? I, uh, <laughs> Rational nexus. This is a fundamental principle that says there should be a relationship between the nature of the service required and the cost to provide that service. So this comes back to that equity question. The nature of the cost to provide the service and the revenues you collect from the service should align. There are three approaches to, to doing impact fees. You have the buying approach whereby you have current investment in the system that's been placed and been fixed by existing customers, and new customers have to buy into that investment. The second approach is the incremental investment whereby you have a new development, a new set of costs, new capacity, and that customer which will gain from that new capacity, that new cost, will have to buy into that new capacity and new cost. And then you have the combined approach that says, you have existing capacity and you have new capacity. Let's put them together. And upon putting together, we price it and the customer buys into the system. So that's the, the, the three general approaches. Typically, the combined system approach is utilized because you have mature systems that keep adding capacity and the cost is served that new capacity. Yeah. So <clears throat> the impact fee is the steps. We'll go through assessing your existing system, looking at the investment in the existing system, determining the capacity associated with that investment, and then looking at new projects that may come onto the system to support your existing system. Then we look at what we call a capacity standard, and all that says is, what is the typical usage requirement for the customers you serve? Okay. So you have the total cost of the system, the total capacity. Cost divided by capacity gives you a unit. You have the typical requirement of the customer. You put them together, and you get the maximum allowable fee. So that's, in short, the process we utilize to determine the impact fee. Currently, you have 
plant expansion fees. You do not have one for water service, and we'll be establishing one for water service as a part of this study. Uh, for sewer service, the, the purpose is to offset your treatment and collection system costs, and it's currently about 2,640. For example, for example, you charge for, you charge your current impact fees based on the tap that you highlighted, and for example, a residential customer <coughs> would be considered having one tap, a single family mobile one tap, a multi-family unit one tap, a hotel, for example, will have one tap for the general administration, and then for every room, a tap is assessed. Uh, for day schools, one tap, and then for every 20 individuals within the school, there's a tap. So that's the current basis that you utilize to charge for, you know, your expansion fees. Questions? One-time fee? Yes, sir. That you pay up on after you register the service, you pay it as a part of the application. What's the base? It's expensive to build in the Small. city. and information. No Always problem. Yeah. 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 You, have a, you have questions for Robert? Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, the proof's in the pudding when he delivers it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Yeah. Thank you all very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. <sighs> Any other questions? Oh, boy. Uh, Any other questions? Yeah. No, no more questions. Our next item is the council approval of requests, um, which will actually occur this evening, your actual vote and motion on approving the request. But I know you all need to have a discussion for funding from the hospitality tax fund, uh, surplus monies, and to amend the fiscal year 2017-2018 hospitality <laughs> tax budget. And so we are carrying over this discussion from the last council meeting where, um, yes, ma'am, I think Dee Dee has a copy for you all for everything, and she is coming with those. Um, so we updated the memo from last time to reflect any um, action you took last council meeting. And then Dee Dee's also put together the additional requests that have come in. And so we wanted to make sure you all have the opportunity to see all of that kind of in one place. And I and, apologize. Um, I was supposed to send you guys something, and I, I didn't. Okay. But I, I want to put that on the table for discussion. Certainly. And so we didn't take any liberty. We didn't change anything. We just figured you all needed to look at what's before you and make um, adjustments or suggestions. And I know Mr. Duvall also had a proposal he shared with you all that this would be the time to. Well, before, before we do that, so. We had the list before us. Where's the other list? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is where's the original? So, so this is this is, one we had last week? Yeah, this so, what is, so what is this? <laughs> Since then? <laughs> okay. They heard it was in there. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, when is the committee meeting? When is the meeting? No. Things are in March. They have to come in in March. That's for next year. Yeah. Their applications are available now for next funding year. All right. Well, what about this, this year? I, um, They're not meeting. Yet. They've already met. So this is this is additional. For this year. Yeah. How much? I don't need to do it now, but how much is left in whatever the, is considered the pot? So if the. Based off what we presented to you all last week, it was 643000 There was 780000 available, so I had tried to leave a balance there for a multitude of re reasons, but I also knew that there were some additional requests that different folks had mentioned to me. So there's a $137,000. If, if you were to approve everything that was originally on the table that we gave you, Last meeting, that would leave a balance of do we have thirty-seven thousand. Do we have available, Didi? Maybe you can provide what the the groups are all getting now that are asking for additional clean and safety 
You know, I, I, I'm, I'm struggling with the request, one of the requests, and now we're getting another request. You know, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm looking, well, first of all, I'm looking at the city center partnership. The reason that we did a bid was to allow them to fund these types of programs. And, you know, I feel like every time I turn around, they're asking us for an additional amount of money um, to, to cover the program that they, they put in. They've got $700,000 <coughs> in the bank. You know, they're, if you look at their 1099, you may wonder, 990, excuse me, 1099 is what I get, but 990, I mean, if you look at, I'm just, I'm struggling, everybody keeps coming here, but yet they all have funding. We, we currently have three groups that do the clean and safe, and then two of those are neighborhood groups, um, Five Points and the Vista. And what the committee decided to do um, for 17-18 was combine their request for clean and safe along with their request for their regular funding that they received. So how much did they each get out of those three groups and, and this, this budget that's currently, that they're being funded currently now? I don't have those right in front of me. We'll see the two I mean, just a second. For City Center Partnership, it was 260000 For the Congaree Vista Guild, it was 260000 And that was for both their clean and safe and their regular funding. Um, five points was 229000 for clean and safe and their regular association. No, that's what they got. That's not the request. That's what they received. That's, 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 that's not clean and safe. That's overall. That's overall for five points and the Vista. Um, clean and uh, city center partnership was <laughs> specifically for that for their amount. Okay, let's go, let's go Duval. Oh, Ms. Mayor, I think that we've made a commitment to uh, Vista Gill for clean and safe, but I, I think we need to think seriously about not funding any of the other requests and take that leftover money, which has now been reduced by... 120,000, so it'd be about 520,000, and put it put that into the committee process for next year. Right. Last year we had 230,000 to carry forward as surplus, and, and the committee used that. Um, I would, I, I think that's a, that may be reasonable, but if we're in a position where we've got dollars that we can shift and set aside for another period, I'd rather we take a look at some of those other organizations that are traditionally out there, again, that don't get nothing. That's number one. Um, number two, um, I'd like to see the budget for um, uh, five points and uh, the VISTA. What about the city? Center. City center. Uh, and city center, that's fine. All three of them. If you don't ask, let's do it. Let's all lay them all on the table. Well, there's no need. Ms. Ms. Devine and Mr. McDonald. Well, just a question since we're on clean and safe, and I just want to be clear on, on Dee Dee, the new memo you gave us. Yes, um, ma'am. This for five points additional for clean and safe. Yes. You said they got 220. So basically they want the two, an additional 225 for this current fiscal year, or is that what they're asking for for next year? That was um, what they were short for in this year, and I just included that because it was in the memo that was attached. <coughs> um, the main thing they were requesting funding for was the, the food wine. and wine festival. Right, and I know they called about that. So, but for so well, I get they were call. initially yes, asked, they initially asked for four fifty. Asked for new money. Asked for new money. Let's yeah. see. That's new money. That's, 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 on, that's on top of. There's a memo in there for this yeah. current fiscal year. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, to for now. Until July. Can, can we, uh, that, that's my understanding. I if I'm wrong, please someone correct me. Can we get Ed's question first, then Daniel. No, I'm. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, Daniel. I, I just was curious. When we, maybe I misunderstood, but when we committed for clean and safe for the Vista, it was for the next fiscal year. I think they were asking for the. I know they were. Did asking for the did I misunderstand? I thought that was the. They wanted to ensure that we added that on the next fiscal year. I it was eighteen. They are what they were. What their my understanding because that's what it says here is that they wanted to um, 
over the course of three years, they were asking you all to increase as long as the committee allocation stayed whole, they were asking you all to increase the allocation by a certain amount, which I forget what that amount is right now. It's in this paperwork. They wanted to get by 375 or whatever. Right. They want you to increase line it item. by that amount as a line item so that they um, can dedicate that amount to the clean and safe. And so we were just presenting this as an option to you that if you went ahead and with the surplus funds, for the first year only and get them to that level through the surplus fund and then when the committee <coughs> met then they would hopefully sustain them at the level if that's what their request is I mean I agree with you and I asked all of these groups to explain to you you know what are you getting for allocating the additional money like a budget to clean and safe like what will it really yeah. what will it actually accomplish and I think they have that, but we weren't trying to get, without them being here to present it themselves, we as staff didn't want to speak for them. But that's the gist of what they've explained they'd like to do. I and I think there should be a letter from the Vista Gill. If it's not in here, we sent it to you all. Previously. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I just, I'm reading what's here, and it clearly says it's starting 1819, so I don't know why we'd be taking out a surplus. I mean, I understand your theory. Get it to next year. Free in that level, but one one of the things that we said in the beginning of the budget last year when we did this is that we need to be putting some money away in so that account, and right now we're getting ready to spend it all. I mean, anytime somebody hears there's a penny in that account, there's a request in here. Exactly. Um, there is, yeah, and we me, just hey, bring I've it. I've got a question. Do we have? A, uh, do yes, do we get a? A budget. Uh, I know we see mostly a, a letter or a memo that comes requesting something. But do we get a budget showing where the dollars are going? And the committee sees we, all of that. Yeah. They do. Yeah. We okay. do. I'd like to see it. Uh, yes, those sir. three. Okay. Uh, those three. The budgets for those three. Right. The, in yes, addition sir. to that, excuse me, Attorney Officer. Yes, sir. In addition to that. Is there any way we can see what you got on hand before you grant it? What's what's the balance? Here it is. What Teresa just said. That did would I, be a. Did I miss well, that? Well, the total was seven eighty last week. We approved one twenty. No, no, no. As far as the surplus or in. No, I'm talking about the, the organization. Oh. I'm not talking about the seven hundred eighty thousand dollars. Say, for an example, you have got a group. And they've asked for X number of dollars. Yes, sir. Do they have in the bank? That's what we want to know. We received their um, financials and their 990 and all of that information when they complete the application. Um, we also receive an update throughout the year. That's so right. we do have that on hand. Can we uh -huh. include that as a part of that figure uh, Mr. Davis has requested? I'd certainly like to know what's in the pot before we put something in the pot. Yes, sir. Their pot. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> they're, they're, you want to know, know what, what, uh, what the balance yeah. is. Like. And I think one thing yeah. that will hopefully be helpful yeah. to you all that Didi's, you know, already been working on, but it has the capacity to do more. Didi, why don't you explain the the Zoom grants functionality to council because they should be able to pull up a lot of this yes. information going forward. Um, as you know, we went electronic the previous year with Zoom grants and. Um, that has their applications along with all of their financials, their 990 that are required to submit. Um, all of that is online and accessible to you all um, for your viewing. Um, it will show what they were funded. It will show their budget. Um, it All the questions we ask on the application, the number of tourists, um, the attendance that they had, all of that is available. And it will also produce spreadsheets um, for you to compare information um, whenever you have questions. Um, Didi, um, it might be helpful. I'm not sure if we need it today or, or tonight, um, but prospectively, um, well, maybe identifying four or five data points would always be helpful to have. I mean, obviously, I don't want to judge an organization because they've been good stewards and, and, and judge them negatively because they have a balance sheet. That's a, that's a, that's a good thing. Um, but it might be helpful to have four or five data points, maybe – uh, what, what you know, what what the annual budget is, what the balance sheet, what what, what uh, how much cash on hand they might have, uh, uh, 
maybe if, if this there is an impact or what have you. I mean, it, it, it probably wouldn't hurt uh, to have those numbers kind of going forward. But not I, I think, but I think it, it, well, to go online and, and, and pull up this spreadsheet and try to dial into different information, um, let's just make sure, uh, whatever those happen to be, let's make sure we have those available in, in the future. Yes, any any of that that you need, I could pull it as well yeah, and, and we provide to, it. Yeah. And then if you were um, remotely somewhere that you needed something, you could also go on there. But I can pull anything that you need yeah. as well. Yeah, I think, I think we probably just give you some direction, three, four, yes, five sir. points that might be helpful. Yes, sir. As we make decisions. And, and usually we won't make a whole lot of decisions. I mean, 95% of everything is decided by the committee usually anyway. And uh, uh, Ms. Devine. Personnel, whatever you um, call it. Not about the in a safe, but uh, to Daniel's point, I, I would agree that we need to keep some money to carry over or just some when we have, sometimes we have things that come up that we didn't, we weren't aware of that we need to fund. So I wholeheartedly agree with that concept. But my butt to that is. Um, <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> but, um, you know, there are sometimes there are groups that even when the committee comes and we approve the committee's recommendation, we know well, what the committee approves for them is not something they're going to be able to do their event on. Case in point, you know, one we approved last week, Auntie Karen, we knew the amount she got, there was no way that she was going to be able to do that event. That's why last year she actually didn't do the event, um, but she, you know, wanted to bring it back, and from what I hear, it was a huge, huge success. So, um, you know, I, I say that to say that there are some times that, and I know Howard has a proposal that we've talked about for over a year, but we haven't put it in place, and maybe this is the year to do it for the 18-19 year, but there are some groups that traditionally we know that the committee, um, based on what they have and what they want to see, um, has, you know, gives them, grants them a certain amount of money, but we as council know it's a good event, and we know that that's not enough, and we might need to look at that. With that said, what I want to put on the table, and I, I D.D., you gave me this, and I don't know. What did Black Pages get through the committee process? Is that 15? Um, let's see. While she's looking at that, I, I had D.D. pull for me the last 10 years of funding. Um, and traditionally, um, with the exception of two years where they got 25000 and one year they got 30000 the the lowest amount that we traditionally have funded Black Pages is 50 to put on that event. We've given them as much as 80 in years past. And so I would like to get them back to that 50 in order to do that event. Um, they were given 25000 That is with what council added. Huh? That's with what council and committee okay. together was okay. 25. 25. Can so there would be an additional 25. Can I have a sidebar to your conversation? You know, one of the things that we talked about years ago and we, we said is that, you know, th this money's not supposed to be for groups forever and ever. When do we start weeding people? I mean, I think that's what the committee has been doing is trying to weed down so that they can I think. bring in other people. And, you know, this isn't directed at any individual, but, you know, you just, it seems like the same groups and, you know, I think, Annie Karen's a great example. I mean, not that I, I shouldn't say a great example, but she didn't she didn't do an event, but she still survived, you know. And granted, the event went really well, and I'm excited for her because I think, she, yeah, I mean, well, it's, mm -hmm. you I, know, I, I, I guess it's just at some point, how do we help use the money to continue to grow? You know, um, it's a struggle because yeah. you go back and forth, and, and we've talked about it, and there hadn't been a rhyme or right. reason, you know, but I was looking at it because at one point there was a proposal from the hospitality districts, if you all remember, that said we ought to get 50% of what we collect. <laughs> you know, uh, that means Harvardson's going to get about a million something <laughs> this year. But, I, I, but you know, I, I'm trying – yeah, it's, I, I hear it's, Sam because there's a lot of people calling me going, you know, we, we don't we, ever we get anything. Nothing. We never get anything. And, and they're not asking for year. arm and legs. And that's what we tried to do last year. I mean, we, you know, I've heard great things about, um, I can't even think of what it's called, but a couple of the new groups that we funded last year, I've heard some really good things and they just wanted an opportunity. I think it's a hard, it's hard because what happens and, you know, not to, you know, pinpoint anybody, 
because as the mayor said, you know, you don't want to make them a victim of their own success. Right. But we've talked about that. If you take that whole philosophy, then you get to the point, and I think the committee did try and do that one year, then you do have the Five Points Vista and, and so they said a partnership, and people were like, okay, you know, or the museum, you know, and people were like, well, the, you know, they get a huge amount. When do you start dwindling them down? Well, if you dwindle them down, then are they able to continue doing the events and doing things that actually bring people in? But, but, to, say, but to say that, I do think that we need to take a deeper dive because when somebody gets to a certain point where they're able, because their other revenues and, and are, are really good, you know, at what point do you say, well, wait a minute, you know, we're funding you... <laughs> Three hundred thousand dollars a year, but you, you got a director making one hundred eighty thousand dollars a year, and you got seven hundred thousand dollars in the bank. You start to go, well, whoa, wait, wait a minute here. As we, as you know, how do how do how do we balance that out? I think that's going to be a discussion we're going to have to have. Mr. Budget. Davis, Mr. McDowell, um, make a brief the point I'm, I'm really trying to make is that um, I I do go back to um, I think the best philosophy we've ever had on that, and that is that. Um, uh, at some point, we are ha we have expectations of the organization, and that is that they are they reach a almost reach a point of independence or dependence on on this pot of money, or they can recycle at some point. You know, you get off and you come back on at some point, but you still have those organizations in line. They have a good product, but for some reason they can't make it through that committee process. You know, um, and it's uh, so they, they you never see the real growth in that that you want to see. But what what tends to happen is the larger organizations grow and grow and grow. The smaller organizations they can't get on the food on the food in the food chain, and and that I think that's a legitimate argument uh, because some of them are also coming from parts of this city that um, you know. If we want to continue to sell the city as a whole, then we've got to help uh, attract people to other parts of the city also. Why can't there be a fresh and clean kind of approach? And the approach, of course, sort of lends itself to, it seems to me that when we give hospitality tax dollars, there ought to be something. Didi, what's the... Yes, sir. And, and, and you, you, you're new. What's the accountability? <laughs> what's the accountability factor that's included when you give hospitality tax dollars? Yes, sir. What's the accountability to us? Uh, you give you give someone a pot of money, and you would hope that they've got reserve, they got funds in the bank that will sort of help augment their budget. Hospitality tax dollars, from what I understand, sort of feeds itself through whatever is given, and at the end of the year, or at the end of this thing, it's it, you got zero in the bank. What's what's the accountability issue? Um, I'm gonna let Ron. Do you want to come up and speak a little bit on the on what we? Sure. Is that okay? I've seen the ins and outs. Um, for about 13 years with the grants, and I think the committee does a good job of evaluating the same points that you um, that you all do bring up. But I'll let John speak just for a minute about that. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. I didn't really anticipate that I would be up here, but there are some things that that the committee has always, as long as I've been involved with it, been very concerned with, and that's spreading the dollar around the community and not giving it in a way that it would be quantified in any way. Some of and most of the small organizations get money based not on the numbers of people they bring in, in view of the committee, but how it enriches the community and how we can spread that money around the community to recognize the diversity of the community itself. So we consider it an enrichment, a community enrichment project. And the hospitality tax dollars, as I understand it, and as I think many members of the committee understand it, were put in place to guarantee to the arts community a steady funding source. And it has been doing that since its inception. 
One of the other things the H Tax Committee has been doing has been looking at organizations which are funded, which are doing a splendid and remarkable job, and then looking at activities that those organizations might fund. For example, the Auntie Karen organization never came to the, before the committee for money to fund the organization itself, but did come for the event, Legends, several times. And the reason that it got less money each time for Legends is because we did look at the revenues that that activity itself was able to generate. And it kept growing and growing and growing, but it was limited by the facility. It could only sell so many tickets. So the committee looked, how can we supplement what they need, not give them everything they do need, but help them? And I think that's the way we look at most of the organizations, particularly those that are the smaller organizations, because to get their foot in the door, they need a lot of help. Um, particularly now that the, the, everything is electronic. Not everybody has access to a computer. We may think it's easy to get to the library or wherever, but some of the small organizations really need a lot of help. And I know that I, as a committee member, and other committee members have been able to go and talk to people and help them to develop their applications as they present them and have suggested to them on and on and over and over that they not just ask for the specific activity they, they might do, like the Cornbread Festival, but they ask us to help them for the uh, Main, North Main Business Association as a district, as a hospitality district, and direct your grant application in that way. So uh, there are just so many different things that we as a committee look at before we present it to you. And as Dee Dee said, everything is a spreadsheet there for you to see. Are there any other questions you might have? Yes, sir. Well, John, I, I have a proposal that I'm trying to get the council to talk about this afternoon, and it's based on the proposal that you sent to the mayor several years ago. Uh, and uh, it, I think it would take care of some of the concerns of the council. Uh, you have. Well, I, I, I remember basics of what I did send to Mayor Benjamin. I remember basics of it, too. I basic, sure I remember. And that was I right at the, the beginning. I also. The, the line items were the, the, the buildings that you owned or that you had contracts with or you had a statutory obligation to, like the museum, Adventure, Historic Columbia, Columbia Music Festival Association. Those would be your specific line items. Then the next ones down from them would be activities or organizations that specifically were seen as economic engines for the community like Famously Hot, like Black Pages, and so on. And then those would be funded directly by council and come out of the competitive process. And then I even suggested and put in that suggestion years ago that we consider Harbison as a hospitality district and look at hospitality districts specifically different. So I, I think that's the direction that in talking to Mr. Duval, he was talking about going. But even looking at the hospitality districts, when they come before committee, they come not just for clean and safe, but for their general operations. And that's why this year, the committee decided to put both requests together, because there was absolutely no way that it could be funded at the level they needed, eight or $900,000 for each of those three districts. So our determination was, Let's put it back in the hands of their effective boards of directors and let them see how that money can be spread around and best used. Well, well John, you've more or less outlined what, what I have a proposal. I'll give you a copy of it so you can have it up there. If you Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the comments. Is that the same one we looked at before? This is what I sent it's last a, night. That's a bit of, that's a, bit of a variation of these. Has that, that changed a little bit? You tweaked it. Couple years. The um, um, Daniel. Uh, you know, as we uh, a couple of really several actually really good points raised here, and obviously having a um, keeping a, a nest egg for whatever may come um, ought to be a part of it. 
the proposal, the list of, of, of items on uh, that the city manager uh, cobbled together for us based on requests, previous requests, and, and some that we actually gave her as well, and, and some and at least one urgent pressing need on there, we're going to have to go ahead and take them up. And I, I'm, I, I would tell you I'm prepared to take up several of them, if not all of them, uh, tonight. The newer list, um, we, can, we can choose to look at some of those as well. Um, I know I sent you the one on Sally Salamander, um, yes, uh, for example. The, uh, we've got a, anyone know where went? Is there anyone? I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Uh, the, um, let's, let's recognize the fact this is a human process, okay? Yeah. This, this, this is a, this is a human process uh, with, 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 with shifting priorities and, 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 and shifting um, um, Value associated with different types of events. You know, one um, citizen committee may, may think that festivals or, 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 or runs are, are, are valuable, and, and, and another, the next year they might not think that's the case. You know, some are looking for real, you know, uh, economic impact that affects not just the general body, but also how it drives eight stacks, you know, uh, in, into the, in the community. I think I will say I think the the connection between uh, events, um, most of the events, I would say, dare say. Uh, and driving more H tax dollars or A tax dollars is is, is 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 more tenuous than we might suggest. I think I think we're 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 talking about ways in which we're using these resources to try and and, and improve quality of life. That's what we're talking about. How are we how are we creating experiences? Yeah. How are we adding to the uh, experience of everyday Colombians and those who come to visit with us? So I think I, mean, I think well, let's 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 make that that clear. I think there is a a, a real discussion to be had of, of, about organizations that we ought to support for the long term and whether or not that that amount stays the same over a period of time or if it, or if, or if, or if it changes and, and as, as organizations become, become more mature and healthier and have stronger balance sheets and, and let's think about that uh, the same discussion we're talking about Ed uh, around um, uh, water and sewer you know the, the, there's always an under an, uh, an undercurrent around mm -hmm. equity and, and, and inclusion and, and wanting to make sure everyone has a seat at the table, wanting, talking about innovation and, and making sure that, again, that this human process that we defer significantly to uh, a group of dutiful and, and committed citizens, and I'm thankful for, the, for their work, uh, that, 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 again, it's a human process. Uh, at, at times, we are, we are simpatico and we agree 100% on everything else, and other times we don't. And, and a small portion of those funds uh, will invariably come back to this council, and, and, and we, we can decide we're going to shift it back, send it back to the committee, we can decide to make our own decisions, which I, and, I, and, I, and I've always been of the opinion that 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 it's our prerogative and, and not just our prerogative, but our responsibility. That if, we, if there's some decisions that we think are in the long term best interest of the city, this council ought to go ahead and, and exercise its uh, its authority to do so. Uh, I I feel strongly that that new organizations, upstart organizations, organizations that may not be uh, in the in the, in the central business district of one of our core. Um, uh, entertainment districts ought to be given strong consideration as well. Uh, I think we, I think we got to talk about inclusion. We got to talk about equity. We got to talk about quality of life. Uh, I think we got to talk about innovation and, and those organizations that are really uh, getting up and up and uh, running and thinking about ways to do things very creatively. We should pay some uh, attention to it. Um, but that's a decision I, I, I really want us to make and. I'm fine with leaving a significant amount of money uh, in, in, the, in, the, in, in the pot. I think it gives us uh, the, the latitude to, to, to make some decisions kind of as, as we go forward. But I am, I am, I am eager to move forward on some of these uh, issues. If, in fact, the, uh, we got to get some clarity, someone's got to get some clarity before the night on what the Vista Gills request and need, and need is. It's um, in here. It, it is FY eighteen nineteen. It is, and it's on it, it's on okay. the letter that you all originally had. Then Missy just gave you the okay. exact letter with the letter inside of it from okay. last time. So if, could, if you look at our footnote, it really explains it. I forgot our footnote. Okay. They want three year funding guarantee three starting eighteen nineteen. Yeah. Okay, so that gives us, that gives us some more some more latitude as we look at these numbers as well. But but some of these, I mean, there's one, there's one urgent need. I think we're going to have to address. Um, I know that several of us have made uh, different commitments um, uh, that uh, of things we would advocate for. I've made some, uh, um, particularly on this list, and I'm prepared to move forward on them tonight. Um, uh, but not all of these. Uh, and we can spend some time working through it. 
uh, thinking about how we do things long term. Let's take up uh, either uh, Chairman John's proposal or a, a version thereof. I'm not sure if it's tonight. I think we need to talk about it a little bit more. Um, but let's take it up sometime um, in the very near future uh, so it, it can guide things uh, uh, going forward. It's, it's, how, not a, this? it's not a great departure from the procedures mm -hmm. that we have going right now. Mm -hmm. It just cleans mm -hmm. up the administration of it. It greatly simplifies the administration of HDAC. And it does create three different, four different mm -hmm. groups. The first group would be the big big people, 100,000 and above, or some some figure like that that get continuous funding, have gotten continuous funding. Uh, it will allow why, them. Why, why, why is that? Why 100 threshold? Uh, I put that in there because that's what Andy Smith suggested. Uh, I'm not with to 100,000. It might, and Didi is going to get some information this, to find out yes. where. Yes. And, 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 and Didi, and she's going to say something, but she moves into her role in, in helping us guide this, particularly um, giving us ideas and policy as well. Which remember we're also going through the Amplify process. I mean, you know, so we're we're, we're developing a, a cultural plan for the, for the city and, and, and the region. I mean, we, we we let's spend some more time on on this to make sure we do it and do it right. In terms of timing, I mean, is the is the, I guess is the die cast for eighteen nineteen? If we've been through the process already, John, so you guys are done meeting, right? Yes, we've met for. Yeah. Uh, we will meet for eighteen nineteen yeah, funds. The applications are. Are coming. The are coming applications in are coming yeah, in now. I thought, I thought someone said the committee in March. I thought, no, I, thought no, I heard someone no, earlier say the committee. No, yeah, I was saying they've already. I thought, I thought that was early. I, I thought you guys were no, incredibly saying, efficient. For Sam, I was asking for this current year. Okay. They've already met when he was saying when this. Committee oh, okay. Okay. You say for yeah. oh, so for any the of year, these the were requests halfway in. I got you. Eighteen nineteen. So we could so we could potentially guide this year's process. Eighteen nineteen. Come out of that pot. I would like. I would love to hear. She does need to have the opportunity. Yeah, I'd love to hear more from. Yeah, I'd love to hear more from Dee Dee. I'd love, I'd love to. I mean, if we're if we're supporting as we are financially about the development of, of the cultural plan, I mean, I think this obviously fits into into that uh, 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 discussion. Um, I've never, you know, Daniel goes to it, but Sam repeatedly goes to Arbus, and I've never um, uh, been a, uh, not supportive. That's the reason the double negative of uh, of. Uh, of sending more resources out there, but 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 I but I'd much more be I'm much more interested and supportive of of, of the the traditional um, uh, boundaries. Uh, so let's let's spend some more time talking about it. Uh, you gonna say something, Didi, and, and then Howard? Did you have something to say? I just put together a few notes, um, but um, I would like to put it together further and have something that we could all look at um, based on seventeen eighteen funds and how it will look into what. Um, Councilman Duvall has proposed. Um, and, and, and what source of, of funds? Did we just have so many organizations didn't take down? Did we just have a, a, a bump that we didn't expect at the end of last year? What, what, why, why do we have 643000 available? A robust year? No, I mean, year? you think the, the Eclipse? Then, I mean, that's eclipse? I guess I don't know. No, that's the no. Eclipse. Yeah, that was, eclipse, yeah, that was, eclipse is this year. Eclipse, oh, eclipse yeah, is in the current yeah. year, so that yeah. won't yeah. reflect in the numbers. So, yeah. so what's 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 the well, one of the about? things that occurs in H tax, and it's the struggle that we have when we make um, the projections, projections. Is we get larger our months with the collections are larger in the spring, so it's occurring in the end of the year. You take a look at uh, the, the numbers that Jan provided y'all for, for November. I've actually already looked at December and January. Right now, we're just barely on budget. And it's the same thing as we were last year, but as we roll up in April, May, June, assuming things continue the way they have the last few years, we'll end up having collections that'll be higher. Um, and then that always creates a surplus. Y'all may recall, two years ago, uh, y'all actually approved us before we gave you the surplus because we just assumed we would have that surplus <laughs> in, uh, in August. So um, it's... I anticipate it'll be the same thing. You know, at the end of this year, we'll have a surplus, assuming that the spring goes similar to the last several springs. And we're getting more restaurants yeah. and other. I mean, I think. Okay. And, and we've also had a growth. Well, I won't say it's aggressive growth, but we have put growth in the last several years of three to five percent in the uh, in, in in the budgets. So we anticipated that we were going to have growth from the eclipse. So that was put in the current budget that we're in right now. 
Yeah. Yeah. So that'll be good. Please. Please. Hopefully. Hopefully. But we always recommend you all yeah, a little so cushion. Yeah. So. Um, Mr. Duval. Mr. Mayor, just give me five minutes to run through this thing one time. If y'all will pay attention, I think you will like what, what is said, and I think it will simplify the whole process. Howard, you're assuming a whole lot. You're assuming, you're, you're, you're assuming let me, let me, a great deal. Let me ask deal. this before you I get started. I am a great salesperson. The, 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 the I can tell one. by the 200 people I talked to this morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What this does is build on what John has, has given the mayor and, and to me and from other things, and it also is a result of a conversation I had with um, Margie Reese, who is doing the cultural study amplify for Amplify, we had at lunch, and she made a good suggestion for this thing. But this sets up four groups in the H tax. The first group is are the big people that have been traditionally getting funding. It's the groups that we have their 990 on file, their audited financials on file, and the hundred thousand dollar figure was just something that Andy suggested is being able to tell whether you were in the big group or not, but I'm not wed to that figure. We can do 75, we can do 50, or we can do no. We can just appoint them. I, w I would say higher than lower. Okay, well, Aditi is going to do some research and give us a look of what, what they are. Mm -hmm. But uh, we would they would also have to be a 501c3. The, the big thing here is that we would sign a, a contract with the group rather than them sending in the gas receipts, the the uh, salary receipts and all that other stuff, we would sign a contract with a cultural group. It would be a cultural contract that they would provide us with X specified services for the year in return for our contribution of X number of dollars. Uh, this is the way Margie says that other cities handle this so that they don't get bogged down in receipts and this sort of stuff. That It's just like us contracting to build a water tank. We come up with a $4 million water tank. We sign a contract with Duval Construction, and when the water tank is built, we give and them And we better the not call Judge Mullen. And, uh, well, so what kind of services would be, are you talking yeah. about? Well, see, this is what I worry about, Howard. I'll give you an example. There was a period of time where people were taking out ads with each other to share hospitality money in their program, which is not allowed. And that's the kind, if you don't have what do you mean ads? So... So your organization would buy an ad from me, oh, okay. and I'd buy an ad from you, and we would keep the money. Well, and that is something we monitor uh, anyway, currently. Uh, how would we go first? That's my uh, concern. You can't. All right, well, hang on. With, with this funding arrangement you're describing now, they would be subject to audit, right? They would all be subject to audit. All, all groups. groups. All groups would okay. be subject to audit. That's in this state of the The issue that I have, Howard, and, and I know you got to get through this, Maybe. To think about perhaps either lowering that hundred thousand dollars. I'm I'm not wed to the hundred thousand dollars. That was just a suggestion. And, All right. And we will look at the thing. The second group are the smaller groups, the, the ones that have fiscal agents that that uh, need some help. They would also have to have the five hundred one c three status. They would have financial audits. Uh, they are the ones that the committee would have to probably do a little hold hand holding on. The third group is what I call the Sam Davis group. This is the, a pot of money that would be set aside for innovative, smaller groups that are coming into the market for the first time that want a, a, a foothold and get their foot, foot in the door. And so we would set aside money that would be used for that. And the fourth group is capital projects. It would be, we've, I think we've got around $500,000 floating around in capital projects right now. And I think that we ought to take that $500,000 and make it a capital projects fund. The committee could help us prioritize which groups get it. So if Trustees Theater was next up to get X number of dollars that the council approves, then we would know that as Nickelodeon and CMA roll off of their use of $100,000 a year, it could be given to other. Wasn't there discussion around capital projects about what, whether we could support capital projects in buildings that we didn't own? Mm -hmm. We can As long as they're tourism related, as long as they're bringing in tourism projects, we can support it. So th those are the four pots that I have. The, the big change would be the contract so that we wouldn't have to get bogged down in all the bookkeeping that we've been bogged down in for other other things. And I forgot one thing in the, in the top group. The top group would have multi-year funding. 
you would you would say it's you you would have two years and Jeff I can't remember exactly what the wording you sent what subject, to subject, to appropriation by subject to appropriation by council what I envision this to be is is the way cities that do multi-year budgets do you approve two years of budget but you true up the second one every year so you actually got two years rolling each each time a lot of these groups like Nickelodeon and, and others need to be assured that they're going to get funded for the next year so that they can plan 12, 18 months ahead of time. And this would allow them to, to do that planning. So nobody never really uh, spins off from the trough. Well, that would be up to the committee. The committee would review it each year. If, if they think it needs to be coming down, then, then the, they can set that as they true up each year. Conceptually, I don't think it's a bad idea. I, I, I have to tell you, though, I'm completely concerned about a contract. I don't believe that is the way to go, and it just it is a license for people to manipulate the system. I'm not saying any of these groups are going to do it, but it opens up a door that you cannot close. And that yes, specifically, we can, close it. We now, can throw away Howard, the Howard, I think you probably ought to hear about some of the things that we've seen and done and, and that, that are in there so that you understand fully. But I, I don't think that for accountability standpoint, having a contract like that, that's that's a, a no for me. Well, you, you have a contract with hundreds of people for the city of Columbia, and you don't worry about them, but you're going to worry about 200 well, 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 Wait a minute, but what does the hospitality rules mean? You have to turn in reimbursables. It's not a blank it does, check. It does not say that. Yes, it does. It does not. It does. Yeah. It does. Not, not it the does. Law, the local. The local. The local. Doesn't law. matter. It's our law. That's what we pass it and sold to the public. But you can't can go change, back. We can change that. I we think can. your busy, okay. biggest example, and we went through this as a council, Mr. Duvall, would probably be one Columbia. I mean that, but that was determined right. that that was a. Um, like an arm of or they were providing a service that whole discussion that was had about when Columbia took you know legal review etc for us to get to the point to do that contract with them when we're paying them on a quarterly basis and we go through that with them every year you know Lee provides the um, direction that they are going each year and the deliverables that we would expect but that's to me a, a bigger or broader concept of amplifying a, probably a spinoff now with Amplify Columbia plan um, because they're a big part you know working with right. one Columbia so to say that a group would I'm not I'm, I'm just giving my general thoughts I haven't looked at this but I think that we have to be real careful about what are we saying the deliverables are to the city of Columbia like that what service are they providing um, the city with one Columbia there's certain services but for us having them we as city staff you know wouldn't be doing ourselves well you look through the list that we have that we're funding now you can think of off the top of your head the deliverables that most of these agencies would have especially the ones that would be in the top tier uh, I can name one off the top tier that presented us their financial thing and if you read it they made two hundred fifty thousand dollars when they told us they couldn't survive without it, but their net income was $250,000. And there was no direct real accountability of it other than the only part of it was the 50000 that we gave that they said that they were going to go broke if they didn't get the $50,000, but yet they netted two fifty. Where did it go? When you turn something like that, you open the door. Now, conceptually, what you're putting together <coughs> makes sense. But put some... Don't give away the accountability piece. Well, what would you suggest that we do? The same thing. If you want to commit to a two-year, you can do a two-year yeah. commitment. That's that's not that. an issue. We can still do the structure. What, they still what need to still supply to everything to, to staff the backup so that we can verify their yeah, I, I, I think it's ridiculous for us why? to make these why? people why? give receipts for gas and well, they're not supposed to be using it for gas. gas. They can use it for gas if you. Uh, if obviously, that is, obviously, we need to spend a little more QT on this. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna wrap this one up uh, pretty pretty soon. But but I think this fundamental understanding philosophy. I, obviously, there's there there is some real interest in pursuing much more efficiency mm. in the process, a much more inclusive. 
approach an equitable distribution to uh, our organizations that are anchored and I dare say even crown jewels uh, of, our, of our cultural infrastructure. Also making sure some other organizations get an opportunity to also uh, rise up to that, that, that status. But making sure that, that we have a system that's accountable because obviously we, 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 there's only a limited amount of dollars to go around. Yeah. It's growing, thank God. Yeah. But, but a limited amount. So I, I, I'm not sure if we spent, if, if we planned, if we appropriated the time to have a full philosophical discussion around H tax, which always gets really uh, uh, spirited. I, I, but my sense is there's a, there's a, there's a sense among the body we got to do something. Um, uh, I, I thought I, when you said you needed some time, I thought we were going to walk through this list or we're going to spend some time talking through this list. Uh, so we can at least have some, some consensus uh, uh, as to how we move forward uh, tonight. Now this is no work session is definitely the time. Whether or not work session on February twentieth is the time is is, is, what, is is what my concern was. I'm talking about the transition between uh, Libby and Cruz. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But we but we we, but we still I'd, I'd like to hear from Dee Dee. We have not yet heard from Dee Dee. And I was just gonna I, looking at the list. I was gonna ask, and I like that they've raised their own money. Can you remind us what what's the Sally Salafander, I know it was the... the yeah, this, this is the expansion. So uh, it's been maybe a decade ago, Leadership Columbia. Um, uh, one of their class projects was uh, uh, have uh, interactive uh, wayfinding walking tour of historic sites, um, historic and public art sites throughout downtown. Uh, they, it's, it's, it's gotten old. Um, this, there was a proposal that the students from Heathwood Hall made to us in which they um, uh, they would expand uh, the, the walking tour, uh, 10 additional sites, replace the salamanders that are missing. You guys have probably seen some of them. There. There's one in front of the Museum uh, of Art. One, huh? Yeah, they are collectors. You got to make sure they're fixed really uh, tight. Uh, there's one at, at um, uh, right across the street from them at, at, at Neverbus, Blue Skies, Public Art as well. This was expanded by 10 different sites. Uh, I'm not sure. I think you were at the meeting. They went through the entire process with us. Uh, this would um, add, um, this would purchase also some uh, collectibles for people actually to buy and not steal off the, off the wall. Um, uh, would add a, an, an app uh, for, for folks to be able to use. They've been working with the CVB and, and, and other stakeholders there. This um, additional funding complements about $4,000 they've already yeah, raised. So they raised $4,000. Yeah, they raised, they raised $4,000. They raised $4,000. So this would complement that effort. So. It's a good look. All right. Um, Y'all want to go through this? Are you going to deal with it? I, I am. I'm fine with the uh, with the with the. Did we just? I'm sorry, did please. we settle on a time no, to address uh, this? Because I think we need to put it on the calendar. I, I'd, I'd, when do you guys set to meet? John? Did John leave? There's. When do y'all set to meet? It depends on when the applications are ready. So got, Usually it's in May. We got so we got time. We got we got time. I'd, I'd, rather, yeah. I'd rather. The applications will be due at the end of March, so yeah. we will have yeah. everything for that year then. I'd, I'd rather uh, wait at least until um, mid April for us to. I just want you to. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, for us to have that that discussion. Uh, yeah. Wait a minute. It's, 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 Six one way half dozen other. If you guys want to go ahead, and, but they're not meeting until May. Uh, they're not meeting until May. Just, let's just make sure that everybody's here. We got, we got some time to lay out the lay out the ground rules. Yeah. So, uh, so we can make it April. Not, we won't be talking about anything else. Just joking. <laughs> uh, we're talking about a whole lot. Uh, the um, yes. Yeah, so let's set this for in April. Not that you haven't been doing this for a long time, but you really have your feet up under you by then. Um, we'll have a, a pretty good look, maybe even a, a good uh, um, look at, at the requests as well. Uh, by then, the it's application. It's a great then. start, really. Oh, yeah. so I think that'll give Dee Dee some time to put some things together for you. So, I had put together a little bit, but I'd like a little more time to go through you know, what we have. Mm -hmm. yes, and then, of course, the new ones that we receive. Yes, ma'am. All right. The. Uh, your list you provided today, Teresa? Yes, sir. Um, that real quick. Sorry, I got a lot of paper here today. I'm sorry. Yes. So, July, 
for Cinco de Mayo, obviously, is, is this fiscal year. Um, give it to me, Vanilla Opera. Five points request is, is for eighteen nineteen. All right. Is that fair? You mean the one? The no, food and wine five, festival five, would be I'm for sorry, the current clean, year. Clean and right. safe. Clean and safe. It's for next year. Yeah. So I assume, are they submitting through the process as well? Yes. They will submit their normal um, annual application for the eighteen nineteen funding for clean and safe and for um, their normal application. Go ahead and be transparent and tell you guys where I am on this on this list so we can get the conversation started at least. Um, I think the urgent need parks and rec that staff has laid out. I know, I know, I know you, I'm sorry. Oh, we, oh, we, oh, we did those two, yeah, right? We did, we did those two. So we take we take that off and that off. So we also change that number, at least as anticipated, to 5, 523. If we take um, 1819 off uh, for a uh, Clean and safe, just to Gill, um, but I'm I am prepared to to, to um, include in our motion tonight that we're committing to the eighteen nineteen um, uh, allocation and, and two successive years. I mean, I just I I, I, I want that off the table. Uh, maybe maybe you got something, Didi? You gonna say something? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the um, and I'm, I support the security cameras in the hospitality district since we have to we have to have them. I support the ambassador program. That is a 1718 uh, request, not an 1819 request. Obviously, cheering up on, on the Capital City Classic that that is um, important, and we got to get ready for the, the basketball tournament. Um, support the firefighters and the sports council. Um, obviously, um, you know that's Miss South Carolina pageant as well as the uh, um, uh, one of the largest. Not the largest tourism event we have in the city every year. Um, is that with uh, the Regional Sports Council? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah, and I support the Girl Scouts. I think I think the I think the amount of of, of the children and their families uh, uh, that will come here as a result of that commitment um, uh, is is huge. And this is a. Is that a one-time is, request? It's a one-time. It's a one-time request. Uh, I I haven't had a chance to digest. These others, except for the Food and Wine Festival, yeah, uh, and and of course and of course Salas Salamander as I articulated earlier, and I'm fine with the rest of those. If someone wants to speak about the others, I want to add Black Pages for twenty five. Black Expo, I mean. Jeff, you and you and Jan, somebody said taking 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 count. What now? Does somebody taking count? Thank you. Well, Missy, we're, can we're you? Trying. Oh, yeah. We're trying. fine. All right. They got it. I uh, but I. I'm familiar with I'm familiar with the Language Buds Foundation. I can support them. It's a modest request. I don't, I don't know any, uh, much about the application, <coughs> and obviously support the payment offer. But I, I haven't seen that request either. I guess that, that ran the gauntlet in the committee and, uh, and didn't. Um, but I can always support the. Raj will be up here tonight too. Hmm? Raj will be up here tonight too. <laughs> No, no, they'll they'll be. No, they'll they'll be come back. That's just that's just to fill the gap. Classic. Can I give the contracts? Um, uh, abs absolutely. Uh, well, number one, I think we need to save this money and put it in the pot for the committee to have for the eighteen nineteen application. So, I don't support. Uh, hardly any of these. But I'd let me give you a couple of reasons. Number one, I think the seventy-five thousand dollars for the security cameras can wait until the committee meets and let the committee decide decide that, rather than taking it out of the pot already. Uh, the cleaning of the Vista Gill, we have already decided to put that off to eighteen nineteen. The city center partnership and basket program, I agree with Daniel. That I don't think they should get an additional forty thousand uh, dollars. They, they have a bid that is growing by leaps and bounds as we develop the main street of, of Columbia, and they, they need to live on that. Uh, well, and they're getting $260,000 of hospitality on top of that, and we contribute to that too. So, I mean, there's a significant amount of money in that. There's a lot of money, that they, and that's one of the ones I think we need to start yeah, leaning down. Sure we make these arguments that these arguments are consistent across organizations too. Oh, hey, don't I'm not worry. I'm much about you. you, you <laughs> but, but, but let's make sure there's consistency. Okay. 
Don't worry. It might yeah. be empty. Yeah, okay. The, 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 um, the basketball tournament and the $75,000 for regional sports camp, I think that that needs to come out of the ATAX for the <laughs> experience Columbia. Uh, we should not be funding 150000 out of ATAX in addition to giving them 80% of all the ATAX that's collected. So I, I think that that should not be coming out of the ATAX. Uh, the State Firefighters Conference, $6,000. I, I don't oppose the Firefighters Conference, but we have lots of conferences in Columbia, including the Municipal Association that was last week, and we <coughs> never have gotten any support out of the City of Columbia. I doubt if many of the other people. Why should we give it to the Firefighters Conference? Uh, this is a this is a national, national conference. This is a national I, a national conference. Well, um, it's this it's this, I think it's yeah, a I mean, state conference, uh, yeah, but also our by our Firefight chief yeah. and our team are Hosting. have an integral oh, no. part in hosting yeah. the event. This is what has pretty much lured it away from the coast. I want to say it's been there for years and years and years, and this will be the first time. So they have a um, from the opportunity to train on our rivers. Yeah. They're going to be doing that. So we felt like that was a little bit of a distinction because we're integral. Yeah. integral I support that one, Holly. I think. And then the other one is the Girl Scouts. We, we talked about this two years ago, and, and Danny Crow came in and said the Girl Scouts were not a, uh, an organization that could receive the aid tax. And I think we ought to stick with that. I don't think that reducing the, the contribution to 130000 um, And I asked that last week, Howard, but I thought that what I was told is that this is a different request or something that this is eligible. Is yes. that right, Gene? It is. So, mm -hmm. Why would it be eligible? Well, I, it's, a, it's a capital need, just like you were saying earlier. This is the same request that they made over the years. I think previous administrator committed to the site improvements around the facility. They've never occurred. I think before they were asking for, like, capital for that. Yeah, this isn't building. the capital this, this from the campaign. This, this is, is a for site. The, this is for the building. Because I, I, I agreed with that, Howard, because I thought it wasn't. Yeah, the backup, the we ask specific questions, and those those emails are in the there. Email. But yes, sir. But Jean, yes. you were saying that it is eligible because it's the site improvement. Thank you, good man. Okay. Good man. And then Howard, I also, I also think something the letter said that I guess some of the improvements was also because of I think what DDRC requesting or something. Did I read that correctly? But the, it's, it's going to help with it's going to help with pedestrian right. activity and connectivity down in that in that lower You're part of the distance. Talking about the well, golden, course, yeah, that's that's yeah. one of the issues that yeah. we need to talk about at some point. Side, 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 sidewalks and, and, <laughs> and other issues down there. Hey, um, so and, and I would say the, the the things are the items articulated yeah. earlier, and those that we appropriated previously, and a couple ones are mentioned on the list from today, still leaves three hundred and fifteen thousand dollars in the till. Okay, so we'll make sure it's clear. We're not exhausting. Which ones Good. did you articulate on this long new list? Um, language Buzz, Palmetto Opera, Food and Wine Festival, and Sell Celebration. How much is this? We do the, uh, this new list. Is We're not doing it now, so. We're doing it tonight. We're doing it tonight. The new list tonight? You did what? Just now, short, just what were they again? Lang Lang Language Buzz maybe Foundation. Maybe I didn't. Is that the single demand? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And, and I'm sorry. And yeah, I, uh, make that two ninety five. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm sorry. I left. I left uh, the. Uh, the the Language Buzz. Like the yeah, Language Buzz well, Foundation. Pamela Opera. The Five Points Food and Wine Festival. The Salad Salamander. And um, and the Black Expo. And then the uh, previous list. list. A black expo. In the, in, the previous, in the previous list, off the previous list, I'll, I'll, I'll say it one more time, and maybe if you guys can help me just type it up in something. Uh, mm -hmm. The security right. cameras. He's, he's, he's the City Center Partnership. The Palmetto Classic. Basketball Tournament. Firefighters. Sports Council. Girl Scouts. And then again, off the new list, Black Expo, 25,000. Language Buzz, Tibet Opera, uh, Food and Wine Festival, Sally Salamander, and then that, 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 again that leaves just about just about under three hundred thousand dollars. I can put that in a lock box. I'll go no, in a lock no, box if you want. Lock. I'm just joking. You can put it on. You can send it all in North Columbia if you want, yeah. or, or 
Hey man, uh, he's getting a, he's getting his own fund. You heard it. But, but, but Lee, but Lee, Some people get bridges but and roads. He's but getting a, a fund. But Lee's a significant six figure fund. Either, either if, if you guys want want now, now let's just make sure philosophically, you know, and, and we've done it different ways, different times, and, and that if we're going to use 2017-18 funds to fund 2018-19 commitments. That that eventually, unless unless we continue to see significant growth there, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hit a wall somewhere yeah. all, all, all the way. I mean, uh, is that fair, Mister Mister Palin? Go ahead. Okay. Um, <laughs> you're, you're that bright red over there. I'm amazed. Um, the um, so, but it still leaves three hundred thousand dollars in there. That's gonna be the motion tonight, um, and we'll, we'll kind of go from that point forward. Madam City Manager, can yes. we get that in in one page? Yes, sir. We're working on it for you. Yes, sir. We have that for you. And at some point, can I guess we can set a date certain to talk about the proposal so that the committee knows what we're doing moving forward? Because that will also affect the amount that the committee gets. Right. Yeah, I'm not with y'all on this one. I know you weren't, but that's fine. You're not consistent. <laughs> huh? You're consistent. Just, I think we ought to hold back. I'm not going to vote for that either. Everybody's got you, you were all for it before. Now you cut no, it I'm, I'm, I'm I not, don't think we ought no. to spend the money. I, I think. Um, There's no eclipse this year. <laughs> <laughs> hey, last year this time, man, you were. Exactly. <laughs> that was an August 21st event that was once in a lifetime, and we had to get the money. Uh, uh, last year, well, you, had a, you had a shopping list, man. <laughs> <laughs> Only one project. All right, get paid dividend. Are we going to be going executive? Yeah, we need to go ahead. I think um, there's some people waiting for us. Madam Mayor Pro Tem, if I could, before you all make your motion, just a moment of personal privilege to try to catch staff while they're in the room. Miss Chris Seegers, whose phone is going off, I think, <laughs> right on cue. That's her stormtrooper. Um, professional has been with us for five years. I don't know where the time goes. Hey. 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 While she's uh, while she's Chris? in present, five so five years. years. Thank you, Chris. How long have I been gone? Five years. What? Uh, much time well spent, I must say, with you all the grants we brought to the city. Yeah. So thank you, Chris. Chris. Thank yeah. you so much. We're done with this issue, right? Yeah, I'm not uh, with you. The uh, I know, I understand. I understand. What's making it be? Yeah, it seems like it's been more than five years, but it's been five. It was right when the um, era of plants and the, the stimulus the, um, was starting. That was right, isn't it, Chris? Five years? Yeah, five years as an employee and then Contract, yeah. Contract. Oh, that's okay. right. Okay, that's, that's right. what it yeah, well, we got it. We did good. You paid. That's your, right, Chris. You I'm brought in. You, you paid order. your. Yeah. You you earned your salary, didn't you? Yeah. She was grinding. She was grinding. She was yeah. Grinding. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't cost us nothing. Mr. Mayor, during the motion period for your um, executive oh, session, yeah. if you we could do add it, two yeah. items. Yeah, um, so the mo motion to go into executive session. And guys, I want to at least recognize that two of our mayor's fellows in the back. Oh, room. good. Please wave. Hi. Hello. <laughs> we had several. Right, young superstar, superstar, superstars. We had a couple more here earlier. All right. Mr. Uh, Mayor, I would also say that Columbia has led the way. Breaking news. President has directed the Justice Department to ban um, bump stops. Hey, really? You spoke to unanimous vote, y'all, of this council, All right? Yeah. Yeah. I All spoke right. to the uh, youth. I mean, uh, coalition against gun violence. In your My son case, went. So I went with him this week to get it to buy a. His wife is going to her car. That's awesome, y'all. All right, uh, uh, we Monday. got a, we got a motion. We're gonna okay. make a motion. You got two. Friday. You got two additional items, Madam City Manager. You said yes. I got them here. All right, go for it. Okay, Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to go into the executive session to discuss um, per, under seventy A two prospective purchase of sale of, of real property, potential purchase of north of property in North Columbia, potential property in Rosewood community. Uh, I also should. Would like to go into executive session for receipt of legal advice relating to a pending or threatened potential claim uh, under 70A2. 
Um, the Larry Stricken et al. versus City of Columbia. We're taking extended off because Mike's in. A receipt of legal advice related to matters covered by attorney-client privilege pursuant to 70A2, extended hours permits for commercial establishment, railroad referendum, security measures, uh, discussion of matters related to proposed location or expansion of services to encourage location or expansion of industries or other businesses pursuant to 70A2, uh, sewer expansion fees, discussion of negotiations, instance proposed contractual arrangement pursuant to 782 Capital City Stadium, Bull Street Development, Lower Richmond Sewer Agreement, Carolina Water, Park Repairs, discussion of employment of an employee pursuant to 782. Mr. Ball, I'm sorry, you did add the additional the potential purchases. Yes. yes. Thank you. Read those first. Thank you. We're going to stay here? Uh, certainly. Yes, sir. I think you at least got a good hour, and then you can go upstairs. Um, Second. Third. Ah. 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 